Studio Q, Queen Student Television Program is brought to you in part by Procter & Gamble, continuing a long tradition of hiring Queen students. And by Kingston Area McDonald's Restaurants. You can enjoy all your McDonald's favorites by calling 1-800-663-2233 for McDonald's delivery in Kingston. All you have to do is call and let McDonald's do the rest. I'm Graham Abbey. Welcome once again to another fast-paced, exciting episode of Studio Q. We are here tonight on location at the Queen's International Centre, where behind us, the African Caribbean Club is in the midst of warming up for their cultural extravaganza entitled Harambe, which takes place Saturday night at Grant Hall. We've got a great show lineup for you tonight, including stories on uh, hunger awareness at Queen's. Timothy Finley was here this past Wednesday, and we've got some great incriminating footage of the arts formal for all your 94. But first, fingers were pointed at the MCRC during last week's AMS meeting. Apparently, the Maine Campus Residence Council was to sell a couple hundred copies of the What's Next student directory. The bill is now overdue, but the MCRC claims it can't find all of the money. Zaino Rajan has more. Buying a What's Next calendar is the key to organizing your life, right? The MCRC bought 700 only to discover this was not quite true. They agreed to sign a contract with Who's Where, What's Next under the AMS in hopes to sell the books within the residences. And we were to sell them at uh, 2 dollars each. The house could then keep 25 cents uh, for each book and return the, uh, return the money to the MCRC once they were sold. The terms and of the contract were flexible in that leftover books could be returned to the AMS at no extra cost until October 30th. What was explicitly outlined in the contract, however, appeared to create a great deal of confusion within the MCRC. Okay, but in December, you, mm -hmm. you did see boxes of books that had not been sold, obviously, mm -hmm. in the MCRC office. A few, yeah. Okay, so why were those boxes that were returned by the House Presidents not given back to the AMS? Well, um, there weren't a, a very significant number, and we were, I guess, at the time hoping that we would be able to get the rest in from the presidents before the final exams took hold. There was also a degree of ambiguity as to the number of books currently sold. Well, I don't know because I don't have them all back, but um, by Thursday I'll try to have them all back and count them and, and be able to give the numbers to Tim and Eric and Andrea and so we can work it out. And, and any that have been sold, we will pay for. Due to their inability to collect the remaining What's Next books from their individual house councils, the MCRC was not able to abide by the stipulations of the contract. This presents them now with an unbudgeted outstanding debt of $1,600 with the AMS and puts them in a difficult position. As of now, yes. nothing. 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 The contract is over 120 days outstanding. And you haven't received one payment at all? We have not. As of March 9th, 4 o'clock, no money has been received by the AMS. Okay. After a series of unresolved negotiations with Who's Where, What's Next editors, Jabal brought up the MCRC's debt at last Thursday's AMS assembly. At this meeting, the MCRC agreed to pay only $150 of the $1,600 owed. And the remaining $1,450? The MCRC proposed that this amount should come out of next year's residence activity fees. Yeah. They, uh, they didn't buy the books. They didn't get the books back. So it's the students' fault that they didn't buy the books, and that's why they're losing $1,400? The MCRC is losing $1,400? Well, you have to understand that not all of our revenues comes from student activity fees. We have revenues from a number of, uh, of sources, including um, uh, vending machines, discipline fines. There is no doubt that the outstanding MCRC debt is a case of internal misunderstanding. Blair Bertrand, however, believes the individual house councils are to blame. Um, the counters didn't come back. I issued notices and I called people, but 
the Hush presidents were slow in getting back. Some of the calendars still haven't come back, even though I remind them. And so Craig Jones, Gordon know. House president, so seems to think differently. They never, uh, they never offered them early enough, and they, uh, to the students, and the MCRC never collected them and returned them. So obviously, they, they lost a lot of money on these, and they were poorly managed. Okay, As so Tim Wilson explains, in terms of the MCRC, it is difficult to speculate what's next for what's um, next. In an ideal world, we'd love to have the full payment. I don't know, from what I understand, MCRC won't be able to meet that obligation. So we're going to have to work out, um, we're going to have to negotiate some sort of deal. Um, I don't know exactly what course that'll take at this point, and I won't until Thursday after the meeting. For Studio Q, I'm Zane Overjan reporting. Progressive Conservative Party, Jean Charest, came to speak with the young PCs on Wednesday in Watson Hall. He was overwhelmed by the multitude of Queen students who dropped in. At one point, Charest commented on the future for youth. We try to regain some perspective on what each generation faces as a challenge. In fact, what I think is the most important challenge for us is to recognize what is different for us than was for our grandparents. Late last week, during their lunch hour, some Marriott Food Services employees took their grievances to the street. They stopped traffic with their marching and chanting at University Avenue and Union Street. The participants claim that they are being underpaid and mistreated by their employers. The CBC's Bob McDonald gave a speech entitled, Can We Save the Environment, last Monday in Debris Auditorium. He's one of a series of AMS speakers scheduled to speak this semester. And the 1992-93 tricolor yearbooks are out. The censored version, that is. For those of you who haven't already received your yearbook, you can pick one up with your student card at the tricolor office in the lower JDUC between 10 and 4. The newly elected AMS executive, Rex, Chance, and Pierre Mohammed, has selected the commissioners and service directors that will sit on council in the upcoming academic year. The service directors are Fiona McCauley and Neil Livingston. Campus Activities Commissioner is Paul Lemieux. Academic Affairs Commissioner is Keith MacArthur. Education Commissioner is Amir Ather. And Internal Affairs Commissioner is Dean Campbell. Due to current internal restructuring, next year's Communications Commissioner will not be hired until March 15th. Still to come on Studio Q, Arts Formal 94. We were there, were you? Tune in for a special look at one of the most memorable nights ever for the class of 94. Timothy Finley visited Queens this past Wednesday. The world-renowned Canadian author was here to help Camp Outlook with its annual fundraising drive. Brenda Marshall has more. The volunteer staff members of Camp Outlook had many insightful things to say about how the camp affected both their lives and those of their campers. However, unfortunately, you won't be hearing any of those interviews, and I would ask you at this time to appreciate the irony of going to film a speaker's presentation with a microphone that doesn't work. Camp Outlook is a non-profit camp staffed and run by volunteers within the Queen's community. The camp's goal is to provide disadvantaged Kingston youth with the opportunity to achieve and experience things in a wilderness uh, the environment. Most, the most important thing is just that they have fun. Well, these kids never go on vacation. It's nice to let them get away from uh, problems be at home or school or in their neighborhood. It's just nice to let them relax and uh, enjoy the company of other people their age. Just have fun and the staff have fun too. Faced with government cutbacks, Camp Outlook has expanded its fundraising drive this year. Approximately 200 people attended the Wednesday night event. Timothy Finley read from his newest work in progress, a book tentatively entitled Songs. The part of writing people's stories is not to explain them, but to explore the lives beneath the pen and expose them to the reader's understanding. You, after all, may come to a different conclusion than mine, regarding the lady. To say she was an enigma is to say the least. But what uh, is being done in the Camp Outlook is, is absolutely splendid, and it's an experience that I've had in my own childhood. And uh, it is absolutely true, as Chris said, it's something that once it's happened, you never, never, never recover from that kind of contact with nature. I'm Brenda Marshall for Studio Q. For those of you looking for a little break from your studies, there are a couple of performances on campus this week. 
Queens Players is putting on an excellent musical comedy called Star Trek, The Next Defecation at Clark Hall on March 11th and at Alfie's on March 12th, 16th, and 18th. Certain tickets can be purchased at the Queens box office for $6. The Good One with Szechuan is also being performed this week. The play is written by Bertolt Breck and is directed by Tim Ford. You can catch its performance this Thursday through Sunday at Theological Hall at 8 p.m. Tickets are $6 for students and $8 for general admission. The Good Woman of Szechuan is being presented by the Queen's Drama Department. There's an ISAC forum in Wallace Hall on Wednesday. Queen's students have the opportunity to teach elementary school students from the Kingston community about different countries and to raise consciousness about international issues. Last Saturday also saw the closing ceremonies for the Queen's Arts Fest. During the week, students had the opportunity to celebrate their musical, dance, literary, and visual arts talents. Art Fest is organized by a committee in ASSIS. March 8th marks International Women's Day. The purpose of this day is to raise consciousness about the continuing violence against women in our society. For those women on campus concerned with this problem, there is a self-defense course being offered by the Queen's Wado K Club on March 12th and 13th. The registration fee is $25 for the weekend. For more information, please call 549-7754. What's on Wear has the hot action going on around town this week. Alfie's has those crazy Queens players on both Saturday and Wednesday night this week. On Tuesday, Battle of the Bands continue with Lost Sea Monsters and Thorax. Stay tuned to next week's show to find out about the Mahone CD release party. The Shot is giving you a chance to win $5,000 in their Long Shot competition. Be at Bartlett Gym on Friday at 6 to support the women's basketball team and win some cash. Tuesday, the shot is sponsoring a pool tournament at 5.30 with all proceeds going to help Camp Outlook. Watch for St. Patty's Day specials coming soon. Dr. Gertie's has plenty of action this week, starting on Thursday with a Gale smoker. Friday and Saturday are also busy nights for smokers at Gertie's. They finally did it. Come celebrate Gertie's one-year anniversary this coming Wednesday. Also on Wednesday, be part of Ground Zero with price meltdowns. That's all for What's on Wear. See you next week. While most of us were wandering around in a drunken stupor on Saturday night, really not knowing where we were or what we were doing, we can all be thankful that Studio Q's own Steph Wilson was there to catch all the activities that occurred at the Arts 94 Formal. March 5th was no ordinary night in the ghetto. No, sir. It was formal night, and Studio Q started it out in style. Hi, come on in. <laughs> As guests mingled at this cocktail party in all of their finery, some escaped to make last-minute adjustments. Hair was definitely a big theme. So were corsages, or the lack thereof. A serious debate quickly emerged on the whole flower issue. Boutonnieres were big too, literally. With all the preparations in place, our hosts described their expectations for the night. When the final pictures were taken, the group shunned limos and horse-drawn carriages, setting off to Alfie's the environmentally friendly way to enjoy the delights of Kingston roadwork in springtime. Alfie's was a hot spot for formal goers as many met up with their friends to enjoy the night. Arriving at the Portsmouth, security was tight at the door as tickets were scanned by the constables. Once inside, though, formal goers let loose. The dance floor rocked, and the formal staff was kept incredibly busy all night. If the sounds on this dance floor were too much, students could venture into any number of theme rooms. 
Ye Old Alfie's was very popular, playing the sounds of the Mahones. And many students also went to enjoy the special talents of the formal photographer. Upstairs, formal goers danced to jazz and blues tunes. The Elegance by Twilight theme was everywhere, in painted English gardens, topiaries, and special storefronts built to display Victorian fashion. Our camera plowed through the crowds, getting some pretty interesting commentary on the way. I miss you so much next year. I don't want to say why I'll cry. <laughs> We caught up with a few of our cocktail party hosts to see how their evening was going. Bridget's trying to find the bathroom, and we have to find a meeting spot for all of our friends, but it's really hard. But it's too busy, too packed, can't find anybody. Wicked. Moving along, there was one couple in particular who just loved our cameras. Yeah, you know, if I was to light a match, what would happen to this place? I don't know. We're burning up here. Help! Somebody help us! That's okay. I can mess up here. Besides the usual formal excitement, Arts 94 received a special visit from the Kingston Fire Department. Midway through the evening, a fire alarm sounded and students were forced to evacuate the building. The Kingston Fire Department arrived quickly, but no fire was discovered. Even with this tight security at this year's Arts Formal, the cause of the fire alarm is still unknown. Perhaps it was just the sheer heat and intensity that brought even the Kingston Fire Department down to check things out. For Studio Q, I'm Stephanie Wilson reporting. Wait a second. I think someone said that better just a little earlier tonight. It's Steph and Jen and Mike and Aaron reporting. Most of us have had our share of financial worries, buying books, paying rent, etc. But have you ever been in a situation where you haven't had enough money to buy food? Ari Goldkind takes a look at a situation that might surprise you. Hungry students at Queen's University. When we think of people going hungry, the usual image that comes to mind is that of the poor and homeless. But the reality of Queen's is that many students cannot afford to properly feed themselves. Generally speaking, to admit that you're hungry is, is pretty difficult for most people. It takes a lot of courage usually to admit that you're hungry and that you're not eating well. Tanya Beeler runs the Partners in Mission Food Bank on 412 Baggett Street. People from all walks of life use the service, including at least 30 to 40 Queen students a month. We ha yeah, we have to get away from the stereotypes that we have of people who are using the food bank. Most of the people who come here do, in fact, have some kind of base income, but it's just not always enough to get through to the end of the month. So All this week, the AMS Hidden Hunger Committee is running a food drive to raise both money and non-perishable food items. This is the committee's first year in operation and is geared to raising awareness of the hunger problem here at Queen's. Obviously trying to get people involved, trying to get people interested to come and help out in our food drives is another roadblock. But once they're here, they're extremely willing to lend a hand. A lot of people have the never realized that there are students who are hungry, through the but once they're here, so night. while you're watching this, uh, people will be knocking on your door collecting food. Many students are not aware of the food bank and even if they are, are quite often ashamed to admit that they may need help. I think there's, there's a general stereotype that says, if you come to Queen's, you've got lots of money, and therefore, implicitly, you can buy food. Uh, and that's not always true. We know of a few students, at least, you know, it's a very difficult thing for them to come out and actually have to say that, yes, I don't have enough money, because many students have never been in this situation before. Yet if people need the help, there are confidential routes to take, and referrals can be obtained very discreetly. 
And the easy answer for me is to say, don't be ashamed to come to a food bank. Don't be afraid to ask for assistance. But it's much easier said than done. However, as much as we're able to, we try and keep everything as confidential as we can. Why does this hunger problem persist? Most attribute it to the poor shape of the economy. But Mike Hamler of the Hidden Hunger Committee sees a different remedy. Each individual has to take their role more responsibly. It's by becoming more aware of your eating habits, you automatically waste less because you see just by seeing, watching what you're eating, you see what waste normally goes into it. With tuition expected to rise sharply next year, students will find it even harder to make ends meet. Ideally, students should be able to spend their time at university without worrying about their next meal. But for the near future, many will continue to rely on the food banks for help. For Studio Q, I'm Ari Golkind, reporting. I got this weather. I'm really tired of the weather. I want sunshine. I want to be able to wear my broken socks and shorts outside. That's it. I'm sick of uh, having to go to school for marks. I just like to go for the education. I'm sick of people asking me how my reading week was. I'm sick of yuppies complaining about how lazy and unproductive Generation X people are. Because we're not, we work hard, we just can't cut a break. Of people telling me I look like Ted Nugent. I don't look anything like him. I'm sick of being sick. The journal. Sick of the journal. I'm sick of the ventilation system not working at Ontario Hall and it affecting the lives of all the students that have to work there. I'm being politically correct all the time. I'm really getting enough is enough. Uh, that's enough. Sick of a loony for a pop. Pretty near everything here in Kingston. You know, there's not one restaurant here that serves sushi. You can't get good Sichuan. Basically, I'm sick of Kingston. You know, damn near everything else. You know those mayonnaise commercials where they say crap real mayonnaise? Why, why is it real mayonnaise? I've been thinking about this for the past few days and I just can't figure it out. I just can't figure out the real thing. What? What makes it real? As opposed to unreal. Like, is there fake mayonnaise? I don't know. Next week on Studio Q, the latest in our student documentary series. We take a special look at the 20-something generation, sex, lifestyles, and the media, and how they affect you in the 90s. Next week, only on Studio Q. Hey, in Studio Q, you are amazing. Brad Oldman, Science Studio Q, good job. Hey, Brad, I saw you in Studio Q last night. Great job. Uh, Jen, what is everyone talking about? You don't know? Come on, let's go to Vids in the Hall. I'll show you. Okay, what did you want to show me? This is what I wanted to show you. Ah, oh, Studio Q. <laughs> I can't believe I was on Studio Q and I never saw it. Hi, and welcome to another week of Studio Q Sports. Queens hosted the OWIAA Basketball Championships last weekend. The champions were the University of Toronto, who pulled off a remarkable upset by hammering the powerful Laurentian team by a score of 61 to 34. Laurentian had previously been undefeated. The Golden Gales lost both of their games, falling to Western 72 to 52 in their opening match and losing to Brock 59-53 in the Constellation semifinals. On the track, Steve Fruitman won gold for Queens in shot put at the OUAA Championships. It's the first time Queens has ever won gold in the men's shot put. On the women's side, Sarah Leonard won silver in the shot put, and Leslie Morrison took the bronze in the high jump. The athletes now go on to the Canadian Championships at the University of Alberta this weekend. At the Women's Indoor Field Hockey Championships, Queens captured the bronze medal. This is the second straight year the Gales have taken the bronze. Well, that's it for sports. Well, that's it for this week's show. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Before you go, though, it's our uh, weekly phone quiz time. 
Uh, this week's question is, who is the famous author that came to visit Queens on Wednesday night? Now, if you know the answer to that, please call us at 541-1040, and you can be the lucky owner of a short t-shirt. Yes, and uh, as usual, if you have any comments or questions, give us a call at 545-6699, or you can write us, Studio Q, Room 22, John Deutsch University Centre, Kingston, Ontario, K7L, 3N6. Yes. So did you enjoy yourself at the 94 formal? Yeah, I didn't see anybody, though. I didn't see you, I didn't see Chad, I, don't, uh, I didn't see Mike. I was there, but strange enough, I didn't see anyone either. So well, didn't little... your uh, date take off in a cab with your wallet and your jacket? <laughs> uh, no, what are you talking about? You know how to pick them there, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, well that's oh, uh, we'll, 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 uh, yeah, we'll end we'll the leave show you with that. right there. <laughs> Thank you Little for watching cap. once again. I hate you, Taza. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks very much. For, and oh, and sure. once again, be sure to come out and see the see the show Saturday night at Grand Hall. They're fantastic. Yes. Really good night. Really good night. Thanks all for watching. I'm Taza Lawrence. And I'm Graham Abbey. Good night. See you later. <laughs> Q is brought to you in part by Procter & Gamble, proudly employing Queen students for the past 30 years, and the Kingston Area McDonald's, featuring home delivery service. Just phone 1-800-663-2233 for all your favorites.